ahead with your work. I'll be leaving right away. You hear that, honey? I'll be around to get you in a taxi, baby. Fifteen flat. What? Oh, I wouldn't mind breaking a leg for you. I can still write those checks, can't I? Oh, no, no, of course you're not interested in that. Well, you're worth it, baby. I'll just hold everything and I'll be there in a jiffy. Bye-bye. Twenty-five, right? Sixty, left. to the police. When we leave here, his yapping days are over. Pick you up at the garage. Mullen, you stake out of the camp. We're heading for New York. The same payoff code? Yeah. Plant your message in the New York want ads. That's right, Sergeant. Power circuit turned off. Janitor screw trapped in service elevator between floors. Yeah. I can describe the guy that slugged me. To all Cook County police and deputies, watch all cars for man answering description of Matt Willis, age 40, height. Five feet ten, eyes hazel, gray streak in hair, usually well dressed, but last seen in janitor's coveralls. That is all. That watchman, he gave him that dope. What did you do? Give the guy your picture when you select him? I'd like to give you a picture of yourself. Lying in a ditch by the side of the road. Oh, you, you wouldn't do that to me. I will if you get too hot to carry. Look out, it's a railroad crossing. No, it ain't. It's a police block. They got that radio message. Hold tight. You'll flag us up.
That's enough of that. Okay, inside. What's all this camera stuff? What's your name? Anne. Anne who? Come on, talk. Anne watches you loud. Keep your hands off me. Hold it, Mullen. I'll take that. All right, Jenny, put the cuffs on him. I don't know what I'd do without you, Lieutenant. Say, how did you find me here, anyway? Well, what do you think the police department's for? And maybe someday you'll learn to keep your nose out of our business. But listen, Bill, you've got to help me. I'm no longer with the journal. Quip magazine gave me a better offer, and I came up with a great idea for them. Quip goes to a crime party. You keep on getting in my way, and you're going to wind up doing one called Snip Goes to Jail. Very funny, Lieutenant. All right, Mullen, come on, where's the dough? What dough? What are you looking for, Bill? This guy's ditched the Pierce loot around here someplace. 10,000 paper men. I tell you what, Lieutenant, if I show you where that money is, are we on this case together? You know where it is? Sure. Okay, okay, it's a deal. Don't forget, we're on this together. I could have found it in there myself. Hey, are you sure the dough's in here? Pictures don't lie. Miss Mary Jordan, care of the Leonard Shelton Hotel, New York City. Who is she, Mullen? A lady friend. Pretty ritzy stopping at the Leonard Shelton. Yeah, and she's a pretty ritzy lady, too. Oh, yeah, sure. Aren't you gonna open it, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna open it, but not right now. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Taking a picture of Exhibit A. The above picture taken by Quip's photographic detective shows Lieutenant Mason pocketing the Pierce loot. Oh, well, that's very nice, but I'll just take that. Hey, you can't do that. All my pictures are still on that roll. Don't worry, I'll develop your film for you. What about my camera? That's worth money. Yeah, well, so is my job. Come on, Mullen, the captain will be glad to see you again. Wait a second. You promised we'd work together if I gave you that money. Listen, you're lucky I didn't have you arrested for complicity. Get going. 1,500 detectives in Chicago when they had to assign this case to you. We found about 2,000 on Mullen, probably his cut. So I figured that there's about eight grand still in that envelope. Did Mullen spill anything yet? Uh, no, he didn't. But he acted plenty rattled when I mentioned Slade. And I'm pretty sure I'm right, because these are the same methods that the Slade mob used in New York. it would sure be a feather in your cap if you ever got your hands on Slade, Lieutenant. Well, that's a pretty tough proposition. Slade's never even been mugged or fingerprinted. Oh, don't open that, sir. I have an idea. Yeah? Wherever Slade is, he'll be needing money. That's right. But who's this Mary Jordan? She's probably one of Slade's dolls. Now, I mail this letter just as Mullen planned and then follow it through to the Leonard Sheldon Hotel in New York. And there you wait for this Mary Jordan to turn up. It's pretty expensive bait. Why not send through a dummy letter? Well, the Jordan dame might open it, and if she found it was full of phonies, then she wouldn't lead us to Slade. You send that letter through just as it is, and I'll bring Slade back here for you. Mason, I think you've got a hunch on this case, and I'm going to let you follow it through. I'll have the superintendent fix it up for you in New York. Contact Captain Lovell at the 54th Street Station. He'll give you every cooperation. Now, here's the money. And I'm holding you responsible for it. Good luck. Thanks, Chief. All right, where are my cameras? That was very clever of you, Lieutenant, taking my other camera out of the car last night. All right, Joe, give them back to me. You can have them back, but I'll have to keep the negatives for evidence. That's a pretty dirty trick. What about my job? I'll tell you what I'll do. You give me a picture of Slade, you can have the whole batch of them. I bet I get the picture before you get the man. Oh. Here, give me his weight in U.S. government stamps. You think you on the case? What case? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Suppose you and the captain were just discussing the weather. Yes, it is a nice day, isn't it? Lucky. Thirteen cents straight, Lieutenant. Oh, that's my lucky number, Joe. Hey, you don't look so good today. That business last night didn't bother you, did it? How'd you sleep? I slept all right. You did? Let me see, Tom. Hmm. Peppermint. Next time, I'll make it raspberry. Thanks, Joe. Hold this for me, Joe. Look, Bill, it's my first assignment on this new job. I've just got to make good. There you are. You are now in the hands of the U.S. mail till we meet again. I promise I won't get in your way. No dice. I can't take a chance. Come a pinch and you'd fall up. A dame will do it every time. You've got a heart like an ice cube. It's not true. Here, here. Plant that in that rag that you work for. Taxi? Uh, entitled it, uh, Chivalry is Not Dead. 
It's good for the force. Okay, Lieutenant Mason. You're asking for it. Yes, they check all right. That's good. Mason, you know Lieutenant Onslow. Glad to see you again, Onslow. I've explained the case to him, and you're to work on it together. Good. When do we start, Lieutenant? Well, I suggest that we run over to the Leonard Sheldon Hotel. I've got a letter coming in over there that I don't want to miss. Well, thanks very much for your cooperation, Captain. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. I hope everything was satisfactory. Oh, yes, indeed. The Leonard Shelton is such a lovely hotel. Thank you. I hope you come back again. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. You sure got away with a lot of silver, Mr. Barlow. I wish you'd let me give him a quick frisk. You know the customer's always right. But we're losing plenty of plate. I know, but... Lovely dog. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, we don't allow dogs in the lobby. Oh, but why are Ed's, sir? I don't care what kind of hairs they got. This ain't the place for them. See that? Oh, OK, Constable. I've got an advertisement here. A young lady wants two thoroughbred wire Ed terriers delivered at the Leonard Sheldon Hotel. OK, OK, but you'll have to take them around to the kennels. The kennels? You heard me. Why, your kennels ain't fit for a dog. The kennels? Oh, kennels. Come on. <laughs> What's the matter, Seidel? Dog trouble. <laughs> a guy comes in here with a couple of wired hairs and wants to take them oh, through... All right, all right. Detective Seidel, Lieutenant Mason. Chicago. I am Mason. So I said to this guy, I said, listen, you can... Mason, well, Lieutenant, I'm glad to know you. I'm sorry you found me in such an unofficerly position. Oh, no, that's perfectly all right. Uh, we've been waiting for you. Oh, you yeah. have? Sure is an interesting case. What case? Oh, yes, yes, so it is. Anything new? No, not yet. Uh, Seidel, has a letter come in here for a Miss Mary Jordan? Oh, the letter? Just a second. The lieutenant is here. Would you please bring out the letter, Miss Rogers? Miss Rogers? Yes, me. Careful, lieutenant. That's a lot of money you're letting drop. Now, wait just a minute. So sorry. The guests are not permitted to manhandle the employees. Empl yes, they gave me a job when I told them what we were after. Oh, and just where did you get that we stuff? You and I. Or is it you and me? Anyway, they said they would be very happy to cooperate with us. Now, Miss Rogers told me that you were old friends. Oh, she did, did she? Well, if you gentlemen will please excuse me. Now, listen to me, my old friend. If you black this case all over the lobby of this hotel... I have I'm... not. You listen to me. Ever since we've been on this case, you've acted like a weasel. I offered to work with you. I offered to help. But no, you couldn't take a chance. I was a woman. Well, you're going to take a chance now, whether you like it or not. I've got a job to do, and if you can't understand that, it's just too darn bad. Now, give me a cigarette. Sorry, I smoke a pipe. Okay, Ann, I'll agree on one condition. I'm the boss. All right. Right, now let's get to work. When did this come in? This morning's mail. I don't suppose there's any sign of our Mary Jordan or reservation or anything like that? No, but the hotel only holds unidentified mail for three days and then returns it. Now, I'm sure Slade knows that. I don't think we'll have to wait long. I hope you're right. All I want is a chance to follow this money. Somewhere in this town, that guy Slade is waiting for us. That money must be here by now. Maybe Mullen forgot the want ad code. He didn't forget the code. Well, if he knows what's good for him, he didn't. What have you been doing? Printing it? Boss, you put me right behind the eight ball every time you send me out. This town's plenty hot for us, and you know it. Shut up. Here it is. Here's the code from Mullen. Wanted two thoroughbred wirehead terriers. Promise good home. We'll pay reasonable price. 
can be reached May 2nd or 3rd, Leonard Sheldon Hotel, Mary Jordan. That's what we've been waiting for. Lefty, this girl of yours, you're sure she's on the level? Yeah, sure. Ruby's handled plenty of hot stuff in Chicago. Yes, but does she look like a lady? Oh. That hotel isn't like this dump. And remember, her name's Mary Jordan when she calls for that letter. Why don't you have Lefty bring her around so we can take a gander at her? I don't want even her knowing about this hideout. Wait, I got a better idea. You know George Atkins. George, the kid looks like he's fresh out of college. Uh, sweet and innocent. That's the one. Yeah. Get him. Send him to the hotel with your ruby dame. They're married. Mr. and Mrs. Got it? Yeah. See, but that means they have to split their cut for the job. So they split the cut. What do you care? Or do you? Say, what is this ruby to you, Lefty? I know her. You two weren't thinking of skipping with that dough, were you? You always trusted me, ain't you, Slade? No. Not when you've been mixed up with dames, I haven't. Sam, you better go along with Lefty. Just in case. Well, that shouldn't bother you, not if you're on the up and up. But for all you know, that cut might not come through. Just try that. And see that Fancy Pants Atkins and your ruby get that letter. All right, Sweet. Good day. Uh, hello, uh, reservations for Mr. and Mrs. James Powell, please. Just a moment, I'll see. Thank you. You know, Lieutenant, I've been wondering. I'm taking a fingerprinting course at night school, and I thought maybe there'd be an opening for a good man on the Chicago force. What's the matter with the New York force? Well, <laughs> confidentially, Lieutenant, they're getting soft. Crime's falling off. There's no chance for a man with real imagination. Oh, I see. Well, sure, I'll tell you what I'll do. When I get back to Chicago, I'll speak to the commissioner about you. Would you do that to him? Oh, be glad. See, that'd be great. When you speak to him, would you mind showing him this? What is it? It's my report card. All A's. <laughs> here we are, room 1608. Also, uh, view a letter here for Mary Jordan. That's my wife's maiden name. Mary Jordan? Yes, that's right. Just a moment, I'll see. Have we a letter here for Mary Jordan? I'll look. Here you are. Thank you. Here you are, Miss Jordan. I'll take it. It's a good thing this is here. It'd been too bad if it wasn't. Hey, you better see a man about his dogs. I told that guy. I thought I told you to take them dogs to the kennels. Yeah, but they don't like it in the kennels, Constable. They much prefer it here. Besides, they're advertised. Sure, they're advertised. So is horses. But we don't allow horses in the lobby. Now get them out of here. 1608, huh? Get over by the elevator and ride up with them. Don't let them out of your sight. Oh, it's quite all right, ma'am. They, they won't hurt you. Uh, sorry, ma'am. That settles it. You and these mutts go to jail. Look, Timmy, aren't they adorable? Yeah. Hiya, fella. Pedigree, ma'am. <laughs> I don't suppose they're for sale. I'm sorry, sir. The hotel doesn't allow dogs in the room. Oh, I see. Well, I guess you're out of luck, fella. <laughs> well, sir, here's my card. If you should find yourself wanting a dog, I've a bit of a pet shop here around the corner. Hartford's the name. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> As for you, Constable, I think it's contemptible of you to deprive the poor little fellows of our home. Get out. Get? Very well. <laughs> Au revoir, gendarme. Oh, no. None of that. None of that. Get out. That guy's been a nuisance all morning with this ad for them dogs. What ad? In the paper here, he just tried to sell one of them to that young couple. Oh, Mary Jordan, eh? Well, it's all starting to add up. How did Mullen plant this in the paper before I picked him up? Telephone. For me? Uh, telephone who? I mean, uh, I don't get you, oh, Lieutenant. Oh, look, Sardell. This ad is a code. I've been trying to find it in the Chicago editions, but I couldn't. 
because Mullen phoned it into a New York paper before I grabbed him. Oh, I get you. Then that little squirt with the dogs must be one of the mob. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. He probably just answered this ad by mistake. It was pretty smart of Slade to use such a nice young couple for his contact. Come on. Is there anything else, sir? No, that's all, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Look, we've got enough rice here for our first meal. <laughs> Mrs. James Powell? Yes? Would you sign for this package, please? All right. Alfred, COD, $483.27. I'll take care of that. Well, thank you. Here you are. <laughs> Come on, honey. Wait till you see what's in it. Darling, you gave that man a check for over $400. Sure I did. And I'll show you what he gave me. Jimmy, it's beautiful. <laughs> Try it on. Oh, gosh. Come on over here and look at yourself. Oh, it's lovely. You shouldn't have done that. Boy, you look like a million. <laughs> but $400 is an awful lot. Nothing's too good for my wife. Yes, but do we have that much money in the bank? Not yet, but we will have. Huh? Just as soon as I airmail this check from Uncle Ben back home to the bank. What check? Open it. It's a check for $1,000. A wedding present from Uncle Ben. Well, well, why is it addressed to me? The bride always gets the presents. Didn't you know that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, darling. Open it. That's funny, sending cash through the mail. I wonder why he didn't send a check. Jimmy, this letter, it's postmarked Chicago. Uncle Ben lives in Albany. I don't understand. It has your name on it. Well, then... There must be another Mary Jordan in this hotel. Jimmy, what are we going to do? This money isn't ours. And, and you gave that man a check. And this hotel, what are we Mary. going to do? Take it easy, dear. Well, we can at least take the coat back. Then all we'll have to worry about is the hotel bill. I can take care of that, all right. We could take the coat back, but I'm still in a fix. That check covered presents I bought for your mother and sister. Oh, Jimmy. Wait a second. Let's see how much money we've got here. You might let me get my thumb out of my mouth. I'm talking to them, but I can't hear what they say. Because I'll have to get a dictograph planted. You know something, Lieutenant? That young couple don't look like gangsters to me. Hello, let me talk to Seidel, please. Well, maybe not, but they've still got that $8,000. Besides, they tie up with this want ad. May not mean anything, but don't forget that that girl talked to that dog man downstairs. Hello, Seidel? Say, Seidel, get a hold of the house electrician and have a dictograph installed in 1608. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, get up here yourself as soon as you can. Right. No funnies. Holy mackerel. 8,000 bucks here. We'd better phone downstairs. Just a minute. I'm in a jam. That store has my check and it's no good. But, Jimmy, this money isn't ours. I know that, but I'll pay it back. I'll wire Uncle Ben and he'll send the money and everything will be all right. Jimmy, that, that's just crazy. Hold it, Mary. If that check bounces, I'll go to jail. And what do you think will happen if you take that money? I won't let you do it, Jimmy. You're just getting yourself into more trouble. But, honey, I'm only borrowing it. Now, everything's going to be all right, Mary. You stay right here and I'll be right back. Just left his room. Oh, 
Okay, Sidell, you stay here and don't let her leave that room alone. You come downstairs with me, and if he leaves, you follow him. What about you? I want to stay here and do a little checking on our friend, Miss Jordan. And I'm left holding the bag, huh? No, thank you. You agreed that I was boss, didn't you? Now, come on, do as I say. All right. Guess I'll just have to pick up Slade myself. There'll be no picking up until I say so. here for Mary Jordan. Just a moment, I'll see. Is there a letter here for Mary Jordan? Another Mary Jordan? Yeah. This one looks like the real McCoy. I'll wait until I get outside. We'll pick him up there. Not a thing. There was a letter here for Mary Jordan, but it's been called for. Are you sure about that? I'm positive, madam. Oh, never mind. Come on. We're being tagged. Get going. Follow that sedan. The dough. I don't know. We just got told someone had picked it up. That'll be the truth. If it ain't, Slade's gonna be awful unhappy. It is a truth, see? Well, then there's nothing to worry about. Except shaking those covers. I recognize Big Sam in that car. Must be two Mary Jordans. Too bad this one scared so quick. Yeah. And this is our only lead to Slade. Well, don't worry. We haven't lost it yet. Beer. All right, get back in the car. Do can you drive? Okay. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, I'd like to speak to the crud manager, please. Your name? James Powell. Why did you wish to see Mr. Pinchbeck? Regarding a check, I gave the store for a COD package. Very well. If you'll just be seated over there. Thank you. It's pretty tough making these payments sometimes, isn't it? Are you on a spot, too? Yeah, kind of. Mr. James Powell. Yes. Powell, you may go in now. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 
And uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Powell? I've come to see you about a check. I gave the store earlier in the afternoon. I haven't sufficient funds in the bank to meet it, and... Uh, Not sufficient funds? Why, do you realize well, that, man, I've come to explain and bring the explain cash to Explain, there cover. can be no expert... Uh, cash? Did you say cash? Yes, if you'll give me my check, I'll give you the money for it. Have a cigar, Mr. Powell. Now, let me see, how much was your check for? $483.27. I'll telephone the cashier and have him send up your check. Fine. Yep? There's a call here for Mr. Powell. Telephone for you, Mr. Powell. For me? Yes? Hello, Jimmy. The check arrived from Uncle Ben, so there's no need for you to use the money. That's great. Now look, endorse it and send it airmail to our bank right away. Okay, I'll be right home, darling. Goodbye. Good news, I trust. You bet. That check's okay. You won't need this, and I won't need that. Good day. How'd it go? Oh, great. You have no idea. A letter got me into a jam, and I just received another one that got me out. Oh, good luck to you. Did you wish to see me, young lady? Um, y yes. I'd, I'd like to borrow your phone, if I may. You'll find the payphone downstairs. <laughs> of course. I tell you, I never heard of this late guy. Oh, come on, Lefty, come on, loosen up. Where's your boss? I don't know what you're... you're talking about. Hello. Lieutenant Mason? One moment, Miss Rogers. Oh, tell her that I... Uh... Oh, wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello yourself, Lieutenant. Seidel told me you were at the station. What's the idea ditching me? Oh, that's great, Ann. Good work. What else did you find out? What do you mean, what else did I find out? What are you handing me? You knew those kids picked up that money by mistake. They haven't got a thing to do with the gangsters. Oh, that's fine, fine. I gotta hand it to you, honey. That's just what we wanted to know. Now, you stick with that $8,000. Listen, you double-crossing double-talker. What do I care about your old 8000 You promised I'd be with you when you picked up Slade. Yes, and that cinches it. Now, you go back to the hotel and wait for me. She calls again until I've left. Well, that's kind of bad news for you, Lefty. Say, we got the dope on this girl that calls herself Mary Jordan. She's supposed to be Mullen's sweetheart. You better go easy on that stuff, copper. Well, is she? No, she ain't. And any guy says she... Sit down. Oh, so that's how it is. Bring in the girl, Onslow. Now listen, Lefty. We picked up Mullen in Chicago. Yes, and he spilled the works. He said it was you that killed Pierce. Mullen's lying. Oh, maybe so, but that's not going to stop me from proving that you did that killing. Start wiring that seat for you right now. Lefty! Don't you fall for that bluff. He knows Slade gunned that guy. Oh, Slade, huh? Thanks. That's all I wanted to hear. You can write that out, but I won't sign it. Then I'd just soon send you up a Slade. If he keeps on being dumb, that's just what's gonna happen. Oh, you gotta talk, Lefty. You're racing yourself straight for the chair. Shut up. Look, I'll spend the summer sitting here, but I ain't singing. Oh, come on, get out of here. Now, babe, I warn you. You are not get, get me out of here. here! Sit down, Miss Jordan. If I tell you all I know, could you kind of ease things off for Lefty? Well, I can't promise anything, but if you help us, we'll try and help you. Anyway, Lefty and me won't be taking no rap to help Slade. You should have showed hours ago. Wait till I get hold of that Lefty. I got an idea Lefty won't wait for you to get hold of him. We'll hear from Sam, all right. Yeah, if Lefty ain't knocked them off, the police ain't grabbed the four of them. I guess it's breaking the papers that they had. You get out of Louis. He's buying every edition that comes out. I ain't gonna do it. You ain't what? You ain't got any right to keep sending me off like this, giving the cops a chance to groove me. You'll get it, all right. But it won't be by the cops. Get those papers.
And that's the honest truth. I've never seen this guy slave. I was only in on this job, so as Lefty and me could use the money to put a couple of thousand miles between us and him. Did you ever see this before? It's the old personal column grapevine. What's the dog angle? Well, Lefty says that each one of them is given the name of a different kind of dog. Slade, he's called a Great Dane. Oh. What's Lefty's code name? A Mexican hairless. All right, Miss Jordan. Thank you very much. I'll do everything that I can to see that you get the brakes. May I have a piece of paper, Captain? I'd like to run this in the personal column of all the late editions. I think we've just got about time to make it. When Slade reads this, those kids up in 1608 are going to find they're holding a load of dynamite. So you're sinking the Great Dane on a decoy. Unless I miss my guess, Slade will uncover himself trying to get this money. And when he shows up at the hotel, I'll be there to meet him. You keep on grilling left, he's riding on his nerve and he hasn't got much left. Everything turned out all right. You were very lucky, Jimmy. As lucky as the day I met you. <laughs> Believe me, from now on, I'm going to take your advice. <laughs> Darling, where's that envelope? I want to get this money back before anything happens to it. Well, I put it right over here. Oh, I'd better hide it. Darling, you better take that money downstairs right now. I will. But not just yet. Sit down. I've got a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. Well, what's this? A bib. In just a few minutes, that door's going to open, and in comes a man with a great big tray. And on it, two hamburger sandwiches with mustard, onions, relish, tomatoes, everything you can think of, and champagne. Hamburgers and champagne? Oh, Jimmy, you're crazy. Crazy over you, honey. <laughs> It's you, Lieutenant. I thought I told you to stay upstairs and keep your eye on that Jordan girl. Your assistant, Miss Rogers, said those kids have got nothing to do with the mob. And after I went and used my best technique to get that dictograph in. Yeah, you did get it in, though. Sure, the receiving ends under the couch. Good. The drugstore is sending me over a couple of sandwiches. Will you have a boy bring them up? I'll take of giving me all that fancy double talk and then hanging up. I thought we agreed to work together. Oh, I say, we never worked better together in our lives. The telephone call you made just came in the nick of time. You mean you got Slade? Oh, no, but I got four of his gang. What have they been doing in there? They, um, uh, how should I know? Oh, now, you mean to tell me you haven't listened just a little bit? Of course not. Those kids in there are innocent. Oh, sure they're innocent. No harm in listening to a little music, is there? Since when have you been so interested in music? I've always been interested in music. Particularly good music. Oh, uh, say, that uh, must be some grub I ordered. Will you get it for me, please? Wait a second. Uh -huh. All right. 65 cents, please. Yeah. It's your spread, all right. Have you got 65 cents? Oh, pay the man, will you, sweet? Charge it to the room. Yes, ma'am. Half star. Mmm, smells good. Tuna. Right out of my favorite ocean. Hmm. Thin slice of bread between two thick slices. You know, if we just had some nice cold lard to go with this. Nah, nah, don't be bitter. Let's see what the kitties are doing. I could dance forever with you, Jimmy. Hamburgers and champagne. Come in. You see it, Pavel? Yes, bring it right in. Point. Hi, 
Ah, monsieur, I am very sure you will enjoy this very much. Our cuisine, it is by far the best. Here it is. Soup Marguerite au fin air. In my country, it takes five days to make this soup. It is cause for a celebration. First, they roast the whole bull stuffed with mushrooms in an enormous black pot. In the same pot, they throw hundreds of rare herbs. And then a superb wine of prize vantage is added. It is so thick, so delicious, so wonderful. But I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Madame, s'il vous plaît, monsieur, please. Here you are, madame. Your coat, please. Uh, no, thank you. I, I think I'll wear it. And now, lobster, Tamidor. Very rich. Very rich. Sure makes my tuna taste real good, you cheapskate. Well, you can have your lobster. What good is it on a sandwich? One more bite of this, and I'm going to start jumping up a waterfall. You are thinking of salmon, not tuna. The way this tastes, I'm thinking of tuna. In fact, at the moment, I can't think of anything else. Well, don't forget it was your idea to get on this case. Yeah, but I'd like to know why we're sitting here eating instead of out after Slade. Oh, got to keep up our strength, don't we? Paul Roger in a fine year. Now, there's a guy that knows how to treat a lady. Yeah, there's a guy that's got eight grand. Say, what about that 8,000? Oh, I'm keeping it safe now. Acting awful casual about that, Lieutenant. I don't trust you. I think you've got something up your sleeve. Impossible. <laughs> Thank you very much. I thought it was funny myself. Mariage is a wonderful thing. I myself have been married six times. And still it is not enough. <laughs> the more the merrier. Anything else, monsieur? That's all, thanks. Perhaps a little music from the main dining room? Yes, please. Merci. Couple of honeymooners, huh? What's the matter with that? Well, according to the voice of experience in the next room, nothing. But personally, I don't know. Just wait till the right girl comes along. Yeah? I've never been so happy, Jimmy. Do you like me, Mary? Love it. Believe me, you're the one girl in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, is that guy kidding, or does a girl go for a line like that? Almost invariably. I don't understand it. Hmm, that's more coffee. Oh, you're oh. spilling it all over me. Oh, gee, Anne, I'm sorry. That, that was clumsy of me. It would cost me less to take you to dinner. Oh, I'll make it up to you. Say, when we get back to Chicago, I'll introduce you to a steak I know that'll make this guy's lobster thermidor and champagne taste worse than those sandwiches. Hold me closer, Jimmy. Oh, let's don't be crude. We can't go on listening to those kids. It's personal. Wait a minute. Turn it on. No, it's personal, but... Uh... But what? Well, I, I thought maybe we could dance. Thought we might what? I thought we might dance. Well, it's been a long time since I tried tripping the light fantastic. Been a long time since you tried tripping, period. I'm gonna work this dinner off somehow. My, you're smooth. Now I know why they call you Flatfoot. Listen, every game has its hazards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Just think of all the months we were in love and didn't know it. Thanks, Fall. It's hard to believe that other people feel the same way we do. It seems to belong only to us. Other people don't have the real thing. It's only a cheap imitation. I'm sure it's a very cheap imitation. I suppose they could mean us to you. Oh, I don't know. A cheap imitation is the part I don't like. Speak for yourself, then you're not always going to have that thing around. And I... Kiss me, darling. And I guess you know I love you. Thanks for letting me in on the secret. Hey, remind me to thank that guy. He did me a big favor. You can do it personally when we pick up the money. Oh, the money, yes. Well, 
And about those youngsters next door, there's something I have to tell you. Governor, I see from the papers you're interested in buying a dog. Why, I don't believe so. Dear, do you remember advertising for a great day? Oh, excuse me, but I think he's got the wrong room. Uh, the lady that wants to buy the dog is over here. Sorry to bother you, brother. That's all right. Hey, how much will you take never to let me see you again? Never see me again? With five bucks, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's beside the point. Here. Thank you, Governor. You won't regret it. Good night. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, four bucks then. Oh, no, no, no. You can keep the money. I gave you the five dollars to get rid of the dog. Now, go on, take him and beat it. Okay, good night, Governor. Come on, Hamlet. I might have known. Putting an ad in the paper telling Slade where he could find his money. Oh, now, look, Anna. I had a hunch you were pulling a fast one. I just never dreamed you'd go so far as to use a couple of innocent kids as bait. No, I know, Ann. I know just how you feel. Oh, I feel the same way. It's almost as if we knew those kids in there. There was a way of bringing the killer out in the open. I intended to tell you about sure. it. Sure, if you had the nerve. Now listen, there comes a time when snapshots stop and work begins. This kind of a job is no picnic and you knew it when you started. As long as everything is sweetness and light, you think it's just great. Comes a pinch and you fold up. Should have known a dame will do it every time. All right, but I'm not gonna let you get away with it. I'm going next door and tell those kids just what they're up against. You're not gonna go any place. You're gonna stay right here. Don't forget I'm still boss on this case. Hello, Mason speaking. Yes. Onslow? Yes. Yeah, wait. Wait, let me write that address down. Yes. What is it? Uh-huh. Yeah, I got it. All right, yes, you meet me. Right away. What happened? Come on, let me in on it. Well, you can stop worrying about your lovebirds. Onslow just cracked lefty, and I'm going to pick Slade up on his home grounds. Here we go again. Uh, let me have Seidel. As long as you're so interested in those kids, I'm going to fix it so you can stay here and keep an eye on them. Hello, Seidel. I want you to come up here and see that Miss Rogers doesn't leave this room. That's right, for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, and step on it. But you agreed. I know I agreed, but I'm no longer agreeing, because from now on, you're off this case. You're a fine sport. I tell you, you're wrong, and you can't take it. I can't take it, and you can't go. Let me out of here. To interested parties, a thoroughbred Great Dane wanted at Leonard Sheldon Hotel. Ask room 1608, Mary Jordan. <laughs> that thing's in every bulldog edition. Big Sim put it in. He's telling me where I can find certain parties that crossed me up. Lefty and his girlfriend. Yeah? I suppose there's too much trouble for Sam to come here and tell you. Maybe the bulls are tagging him too close. Smells like a stakeout to me. Well, I've played longer shots than this before to get dough. And without the pleasure of running down a couple of fries rats. How many? Give me three. Okay. I'm taking four. What do you got? Deuces. How many? Two. They're good. You sure are lucky, Miss Rogers. Yeah, it's cards anyway. I hope Lieutenant Mason's got your luck. That Slade pulls a mean trigger. Shut up, will you? Hello? Would you please get me Captain Lovell at the 54th Street Police Station? Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Rogers. Yes. Now, Mason left here ten minutes ago with a special detail. Anything I can do for you? Yes, would you please let me know how he makes out just as soon as possible? Thanks. Yes, I'll wait here until I hear from you.
Frank, you stay here and watch those windows. Right. I'll get around the rear. You take the basement. Open up, Slade, or we'll blow you out of there. Slade ain't here. Well, this man isn't Slade. He's Matt Willis. Slade, skip, Lieutenant. Come on, come on, break it up. Come on, break it up. All right, come on, Matt. How long since you've seen Slade? Come on, where's Slade? How should I know where she is? She? No, you better answer it and see if Bill's all right. If that flat foot knew how much I really cared about him, he'd be more unbearable than ever. Yeah? Is it Bill? Yeah, he's okay. Take those pow kids into my room and keep them there. Slade Skipton is on the loose. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on my way over right now. I'll be there in time to handle things. Oh, and Art. Art, you could do me a big favor. Something's happened that could make me look like an awful dope. Run through Ann's things without her getting wise and see if you can find a picture of me with my arms around an old scrub woman. Yeah, look in her purse if you get a chance and tear up that picture. Okay, Lieutenant. He's all right. What was all that one-sided conversation about? Oh, we was just doping out our technique, that's all. Slade's on the loose. Bill wants those power kids brought in here, kept safe.
up to? Oh, I thought you wouldn't mind if I took a cigarette. Hey, that gun's loaded. In that case, I think you better take that cigarette and put the rest of that stuff back in my bag. Give me that bag. Go next door and get those Powell kids, and I'll be right back in a moment. But you're not supposed to leave this room. The way you're dressed, I don't think the hotel would approve of your following me. I'll get it. Who is it? Police department. Open up. Police? That's right. You're the girl that was at Balfour's this afternoon. I followed you. All right, where's that money? Well, you see, we were going to return it in the morning. There was some little mistake. It had my wife's name on it. The money's all here. You'll find it. Everything's all right. All right, skip it. Come on, get in this room. Come on. All right. See that they don't leave and try to use the phone. These your extra blankets, ma'am. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, please hurry, will you? I'm expecting company. Where you are. You married Jordan? Yes. Uh, I know. Where's your boyfriend, Lefty Landers? Lefty? Hurry up, talk. He's, um, I, I don't know. Well, you know, all right. Come on, we'll find him. I tell you, I don't know anything about your lefty. What's his name? Skip it. Shell out that dough in a hurry. How do I know if I give you that money, you won't take it and kill me? How do you know I won't kill you anyway? What? Where's Anne? Where, was she... I thought I told you not to let her out of this room. Well, I know, but I... Can't... All right, Slade. I'll get you the money. Let me have your passkeys.
You want to count it? I ain't got time for counting. And your stake out. You dumb flatfoot. You stepped in over your head this time, copper. So Lefty squealed, eh? And led you right to the Great Dane. Well, it won't do you any good. Keep your hand off that gun. You're through, copper. He should have put a man on this job. Hanslow, you all right? Oh, sure. I feel fine. Oh. Hey. What a woman. to that picture of you hugging Slade. Oh, well, look, Ann. Look at this one of our sweet, young, innocent friends. We sure handed them a thrill for a wedding present, didn't we? Yeah, but whatever happened to that picture of you hugging Slade? Oh, uh, uh, you mean the one that you... Oh, I, I don't know, the um, negative got burned up or something like that. Eh? But I told them that if they didn't print this one of you, that the department wouldn't let them release the story. Why, of all the mean, contemptible tricks... Oh, now, wait a minute, Ann. Don't be silly. I was just trying to give you a build-up. Some build-up? Anna. Well, I, I don't seem to have a dictograph with me, but I guess you know how I feel. Will you marry me? <laughs> Some Cupid. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> 